welcome to a new episode. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to replace your head studs in an RB or actually any engine. And what we're going to be doing in this video, the LRP head studs are using, usually when you change head studs, you take the head off the block, you get a new gasket, you reservice the head, but not in this episode, man. I'm going to show you guys how to change them one by one. But before we do that, we have to make sure that my engine's all good. So we're going to comb test it. When I comb test all six cylinders, I'm hoping that we're all over 150. If I'm under 140 on any cylinders, I will work on the engine. But if they're all over 145, 150, I'll be happy with it. We're only going to replace them one at a time because, yeah, if it's a good engine and we get some good results with these comb tests, then it'll be fine to replace the head studs one at a time. So we'll be doing that right now. So let's see how my motor does when we go comb test it. Don't mind the neighbor's angle grinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the coil packs. Very easy. There's these bolts here. You just undo them and then the coil packs freely come out like this. And then we've got the spark plugs. I'm going to take out all the spark plugs as well. And then we'll chuck the comp test in the first cylinder right there. It's the next step. When you take all the spark plugs out, make sure nothing falls in the holes because it will damage the cylinder walls and that'll be a costly job. And then you screw in your comp test into cylinder one. We're aiming for 150. Make sure you've got good battery power in the car. And then we're going to disconnect the cast here. Make sure this is disconnected. So when we crank it four times to hopefully hit 150, it does not start the car or anything. No fuel, nothing gets in there. We're just trying to get some pressure reading. So time. That was a bit more. Hey, not bad. So one, 145, all right, cool. And then we just press this button here. All right, let's do cylinder two. All you have to do is just put it in like this, get it right on the thread, and then just twist it in by hand till it's hand tight. So we'll do cylinder two and hopefully we get 150. As long as it's all around 150, I'm happy with it. If it's... another 145 so just under 150 so cylinder one and two are both the same 145 all right cylinder number three now all right that's 140 all right it's in the green so that's all right that's 140 40, so that's 140 right there. All right, so cylinder five, red, 150. I wish it was like that with the other four, but it's all right being at 145, that's passable. So I'm really happy that's 150 on cylinder five. Let's find out on cylinder six now. All right, so cylinder six is at 145. That's actually pretty good. Here are the numbers across six cylinders. They are pretty even and it's not bad for an unknown RB25 and the amount of abuse that I've given it on track as you guys have seen. These are actually pretty decent numbers for a stock gasket and an old RB25. So I'm not going to be bothered changing the head gasket because these numbers are pretty even across all six. So what we're going to do is we're going to chuck in the ARP head studs right now and we'll compression test it again and just see if there's any difference. So I'm happy with that because nothing's under 130. Everything's roughly the same. This wouldn't fit in there to get the head bolt. It hits up against the camshaft there. Even if it was top dead centered, that groove there still wouldn't be enough to fit this tool in there. I remember doing it on my 33. Because I forgot about the camshaft, so you have to take them off to get to the head studs. Oh man, that means that we're going to have to take out all this. And I hate doing that because it's so time consuming. So I'll start getting into that. Got to drain this and the oil. Might as well because we've got to rip the turbo out anyway and replace it. So might as well change the water pump and timing belt while we take everything out anyway as well. If you can see the timing mark down there, I've put everything top dead centered. So you can see that we've made more room for the stock head stud there. Tool still does not fit down there because it hits up against the camshaft, as I said. So might as well get a whole new timing kit as well while we do everything just to freshen it up. And to get to the camshaft, we have to take the time belt off. Therefore, everything here has to come out, including the harmonic balancer. I hate using tiger claws like the tiger claw pulleys, which is this 
this part here. It was wrong of me to use this. I've used this on the 33 twice and never had an issue, but for some reason, this you can see how much damage this thing took. It was literally welded on, man. Like, I tried so many times, this thing just kept breaking. It never happened in the 33. Well, this one was just stuck on there good, and it took me at least nearly two hours to pull this shit off. So, we're gonna put this guy away, because this is gonna cost me about $300 now. God damn it. No one ever really talks about the issues with harmonic balances. If you come back here, so the back of the balancer, you can see that there's a crack in the rubber, so it's split all around. So that's how you know these things are old and worn. You gotta replace them. So you can either get an OEM one or just spend like 600 bucks on one of those Ross racing ones. But I'd rather just get another OEM one. They're fine for around 550 to 600 horsepower. And the new rubbers would be way better than this. So it's probably a good thing I'll change it. And to take the camshafts off, I've already said this before, that the best way to do it, you count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We come to the fourth one here. So we start in the middle of them all, and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you do it slowly, slowly. Don't undo them one at a time because the camshaft will actually bend and can actually snap. So you don't want to snap that. You want to take it out evenly. So that... And also make sure to have everything lined up just put it back the way you took it out so you do when you put everything back in do it all in reverse including the timing stuff but i'll show you that when we get to that point to do the head studs one by one i'm going to show you guys how to do it in order so you got one head bolt there so these are your stock head studs right in there in that dark hole right there so this is how you're meant to take them out in order so follow this guide and do it one by one if you're going to copy exactly how i'm doing it so please do not mess that up because you do not want a wrecked head gasket when you put everything back together. Now with the ARP head stud, when you put it into your block, we're going to use this 4.5mm Allen key right here. There's a tool for it. Because the head is still in the block, we can't hand tight it by finger. And plus with the nut and the washer and the lubricant, it's going to get too messy. So I'll show you guys how to do all that when we get to it. Take out the first one. And as I said, we're going to be doing these one by one. So these will be on pretty tight. So... There we go. Crack that one loose. You could hear the crack in that. That's how tight they are. Don't forget the washer down here. There's a washer, so we'll get that out with the pliers. And here's the stock stud right there. No good. Now that we've got the ARP stud, we've got the nut on the top. It's a 13mm nut with the washer already and then the allen key so as i said we're going to hand tie it into the spot that we just took out the stock head stud so we come straight down into here just drop it into place and then just hand tie it in don't need to get crazy with it just hand tie it in there we go going in nice and smooth I'm just using a Kincomb torque wrench, so make sure to torque spec this up to 80 foot-pounds. Oh man. There we go, hear that click, ready? That's 80 foot-pounds, done. First stud, done. Right, now for the second stud. Should really get a better breaker bar. And that was tight. All right, I'll take this one out again. Show you guys one more time installing the ARP head studs. Then we'll do a time lapse. Drop it straight down like that. Perfect. Just make sure it's flush, doesn't cross thread or anything. Oh, smooth. I like when jobs go like to, to plan, man. I just hope all the studs come out perfectly fine. It's the only thing I don't like about working on cars, like you'll do like 10 things on something but one of them is bound to, you know, give you hell. So make sure that this is hand tight, as I've been saying, so just don't over tighten it, just just hand tight, just hand tight. Because when you do the torque spec on the nut, it's going to compress the head down, so there's no way that stud's going to come loose, so there's no reason for it to be over tight. Until you hear that click. Come on, man, Jesus. 
There we go. That's how you know it's done. All right, time for a time lapse. Alright guys, so my GoPro battery died and I just let it charge for a bit and I've done the, all the head starts but we've just ran into an issue with the camshafts. So the exhaust side's done, I torque spec them fine, but for some reason, for some bloody reason I tell you guys this. It's currently the next day after the situation, I made like a four minute video part after explaining what happened with the camshaft right here. I literally broke down and I'm not going to use that in the video. I went out to go skate after that and I just can't believe what the skate parks are turning into, man. Like I, Some of you guys I know I love skate, but I've been skating for a very long time. And when we skate, we go to clear ahead when we run into issues like this. And I can't believe skateboarding is now bringing the outside world problem into skateboarding, man. Just piss off. Just skate and have fun. Who cares about oh, gender roles? My God, man. Anyway back to the car stuff because i'm going to stress myself out again so unfortunately well funny enough as i did the camshaft stuff i told you guys to do them correctly i did them at seven newton meters the torque spec for camshaft bolts is anywhere between 10 and 12 newton meters i did them at seven damn newton meters and they snapped i keep grabbing the wrong one so a few of them would be broken i'm assuming and for some reason the exhaust camshaft they done up perfectly fine not one snapped but now i have to deal with this crap and if you guys don't know like it's a broken stud right in there that's not easy to get out so i was meant to use my weekend to make a video of the new hot side setup so i was going to take out the exhaust manifold put the new manifold on get the new turbo from hypergear turbochargers and unfortunately I can't do that this weekend, so I'll be spending this weekend going through all the broken little bolts and trying to drill out this without getting any metal flakes into the head, so I'll make sure to cover everything up when I drill this stuff out. So yeah, that's going to be my job for this weekend, boring stuff, so sorry again if the videos get delayed because when you run into issues like this they take so much time, especially when it's difficult stuff like this. So my apologies again, videos have been delayed. I keep my personal life off of the internet. Like you guys do see some stuff on my Instagram stories, but that's very mild. I've gone through a lot of stuff in the past couple of years and like I'm feeling better now. I'm just trying to let it all out, but I'm just hoping I can get all this stuff done for you guys so I can make more content. I know you guys really enjoy watching the videos between my cars. Some of you have been asking for fishing videos and skateboarding videos, so I'll definitely trial that out. I thought I'd give you an update on this and what's going on with life and that. I'm fine. I'm just going to keep doing what I always do. Have fun. Get this thing running so we can go to Keep It Read and absolutely send the hell out of this car. And I cannot wait to get more drift content for you guys. So if you're a new viewer, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Share this video to your mates. And definitely show them the dangers of working on cars, what to look out for, how to do stuff. Got tons of videos on how to do mods and plenty of rowdy stuff with the R33 as well. And don't forget, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys next episode. Catch you guys later. Oh, that was terrible.